Hey ladies and gentlemen, Stephen here from Red Essence and welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. I hope you're all doing well. Thank you so much for tuning in. And in today's episode, we have the brand new release from the company Zara. This is a 2020 release, of course, and it's called Zara Navy Black. So make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin the video and I tell you all about Zara Navy Black, the brand new fragrance released in 2020, I guess part of the Black Collection, I just wanna say that if you are a fan of this type of content, and especially if you're not subscribed to my channel, please do consider supporting what I do by subscribing to my channel. All you have to do is click on that red button in the corner. And of course, while you're at it, please make sure to enable notifications by clicking on that bell icon. This way, whenever I do publish these videos, you will get notified right away. And these videos will get sent straight to your feed you never need to worry about missing any of my future uploads so here we have it zara navy black the brand new release for 2020 i actually picked up all three of them so i guess they're part of the black collection so there's navy black there's another one called agate black and then i have the third one downstairs i was actually planning on reviewing that one in you know with the fancy background or anything like that this one is a little bit more casual but um yeah so today we're going to be focusing our attention on navy black each one of these was 17 dollars 90 i'm really not breaking the bank when it comes to uh, purchasing zara fragrances you guys know that when it comes to their fragrances at least uh, they have a pretty strong reputation for having really inexpensive fragrances and so i ended up purchasing two for my wife and I bought three for myself. Obviously, I have to be the greedy one, but I'm really happy that I picked these up because I do find that despite the affordability and I think that that might give off a certain um, impression to somebody, maybe that it's not of high quality or that you know it's a rush job or something like that. I do feel like these are great entry level fragrances, especially for somebody who's just getting into fragrances, for somebody who is delving into eau de toilettes and eau de parfums and you know they want something with a composition and a formula that works. And I find that with a lot of Zara fragrances, they do draw inspiration from more popular designer or niche fragrances. It's funny because when I went to my local mall, I actually had Fragrantica open and I uh, was looking at the search parameters and I changed it so that it would show me only fragrances that were released in 2020 from the company Zara. So far this year, the company has already put out like more than a dozen fragrances. So I was like, oh my God, I'm going to need to buy this many fragrances. But um, as usual, it's so hard to find them all in stock. And I think buying them online is your best bet. I know in the past, you weren't really able to buy a whole lot of Zara fragrances online. Now I know you can. So if I do find any e-commerce, I'll leave it down below. But just letting you know, this is not sponsored. I actually went and bought these all from my local mall with my money. But today we're going to be focusing on Navy Black. I'm excited to tell you what I get from this smell. Let's start with the presentation. So the presentation for this fragrance is quite simple, it just has the name of the fragrance and the name of the company here in the front. It is Eau de Toilette Strength and this is the 100 ml size. As you can tell, this fragrance only cost me $17.90 and then towards the top there, you can see all of the notes. Feel free to pause your screen and read them because I know Fragrantica has the wrong notes. They only have like three notes listed for this one. And here's the bottle, very similar to some Zara presentations that you've probably seen in the past. You have Zara engraved into the cap, a sticker at the bottom with your information. The cap for this fragrance does click into place pretty securely. I could pick it up from the cap, but keep in mind it is a pretty heavy bottle. Don't want it coming apart on you. And the distribution on the atomizer is very wide. Let's continue with the smell. Ah, so this fragrance opens up very fresh. I really like the opening. It's very fresh, it's smooth, it's pleasant. You can tell there's a lot of citrus going on in here as well. So you have the grapefruit, you have the bergamot. Uh, like I showed you in the presentation segment of the video, it actually has the notes listed on the back. It has vetiver, amber, patchouli, coffee, nectarine, bergamot, grapefruit, sage, absolute. It has a lot of notes. And you definitely get this aromatic opening uh, compounded with the freshness. And I would say, maybe just in the very opening, it will kind of remind you of Dior Sauvage. The only thing with Dior Sauvage is that I find it to be a little bit more on the metallic side. You guys know if you've ever tried Dior Sauvage, it kind of has like this ambroxan heavy metallic sharp piercing opening. 
This one doesn't necessarily have that, but it has that same Ambroxan freshness without it smelling salty or oceanic or metallic or harsh or anything like that. If you give it just five minutes, and I promise you five minutes is all that you'll need, it actually turns into more of like a Blue de Chanel kind of a fragrance. And so I'm smelling it and I'm like reminded of something that I wore like a decade ago or something like that. And I was thinking about it and I'm like, oh yeah, it actually gives me vibes of Blue de Chanel. And I actually do own the Eau de Toilette. And this one does remind me a lot of Blue de Chanel Eau de Toilette. I went online and I saw people comparing it to all sorts of different fragrances, but if you want my honest opinion, I think this smells more like Blue de Chanel than anything else. I can kind of see how there's something faintly and mildly sweet in the dry down. Maybe a little bit of tonka bean, a little bit of coumarin, something that makes it reminiscent of fragrances like Atado Wanted or Paco Rabanne Invictus or something like that. But mostly what you're gonna get is Blue de Chanel EDT. Now this is not, of course, a clone of Blue de Chanel. It is uh, its own fragrance. It is not 100% the same. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I find that as a lot of Zara fragrances sort of take inspiration from more popular designer and niche fragrances. Like I know one of the things that is said about one of their other fragrances from the same collection, Warm Black, people are comparing it to Tobacco Vanille, but also Spice Bomb by Victor and Rolf. So Tobacco Vanille, the former, is a niche fragrance, it's part of the private blend line, and then Spice Bomb is a designer fragrance, right? So one is a higher tier in terms of price, one is lower. So you can see that they are sort of borrowing elements from time-tested, true, uh, well-performing, and well-acknowledged and revered fragrances on the market, is what I'm trying to say, but they're sort of making their own thing out of it. And I gotta give them credit because for them to put out a product on the market, like this is 100 mil, and this is 17 bucks, and I'm sure that in a little bit more time from now, uh, it will be discounted even more. If you can find that online, maybe perhaps one of the Facebook groups, I don't know. But I know that for these fragrances and the price that they're going for, it's so easy to pick them up as a gift for somebody, you know? So if you have somebody who's just getting into fragrances and you're racking your brains and you're like, you know, what can I buy this person for the upcoming winter holidays or whatever? It's so easy to say, you know what? There's this $15 fragrance available at Zara and I know it's a great smelling fragrance. He's probably gonna get compliments with it. He's gonna feel confident wearing it. It might only last like four hours, but you know, as long as he's willing to reapply, you know, it could work really well for him or for her. So I really do feel like with the affordability in mind and the fragrances that they sort of mimic, uh, they mimic DNAs that are intended to do very, very well. And even if the fragrance does get discontinued, which it will, because Zara has a tendency of releasing something once they get through that batch, presumably they'll discontinue it. But a lot of times you will find that they will repurpose or recycle the formula for a new release, but they'll put it in a different bottle, new coloration, new name, new concept, new narrative, so on and so forth. But I am a fan of Navy Black. I mean, initially my thoughts were, with a name like navy black and the fact that it is blue towards the bottom it has this coloration of going from blue to black i did suspect that it was going to be one of these blue oceanic aquatic uh, types of fragrances and that was kind of confirmed because of the similarity to blue de chanel but all in all i'm happy i have this one in my collection and i really hope that this review gives you a sample of what the fragrance smells like Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. So first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, I really don't find this fragrance to be too unique. I mean, I do find it to be like 80% similar to Blue de Chanel. I feel like it does borrow elements from some of the more successful fragrances on the market, but you know, the similarities to Blue de Chanel are uncanny and you can tell there was a bit of reverse engineering going on, but all in all, it's a very pleasant smelling fragrance. If you are a fan of this type of a DNA, but you don't exactly want, you know, Blue de Chanel, you want a subtle take on that, right? Or a subtle, slightly different expression of that DNA. Definitely check out Navy Black. You might actually end up really liking it. Uh, the overall smell, incredibly pleasant. There is no way that somebody around you will not like this fragrance. It's just a very safe, 
pleasant, mass appealing, inoffensive fragrance. Longevity was four hours. So I think that that's where a lot of the improvement could be applied, right, to the longevity. And the projection was really good for the first half hour to an hour. And then it did start to sit closer to the skin right around that three to three and a half hour mark. So this is one of those fragrances where I would recommend that you carry around a decant so that you can reapply throughout the day. Now, of course, if you are concerned about longevity, I would recommend going with Blue de Chanel EDT. That's gonna get you between six and seven hours. So if you're looking for an extra two to three hours of performance, hey, go with Blue de Chanel. If you don't mind, you wanna save what is it, like 70 bucks or something like that? I don't even know how much Blue de Chanel is going for nowadays, especially on discounters. Uh, but if you wanna save a lot of money and you don't really mind about you know reapplying throughout the day, definitely check this one out. In terms of the versatility, very versatile, I would say that because of the performance issues, I would probably wear this one when the weather is hot. Uh, you can wear this one in a climate controlled environment. This is the perfect office fragrance, by the way. I think that this is also a fragrance that is leaning masculine because of the similarity to Blue de Chanel. You might notice a little bit of smoke. One of my tea lights just went off, but I'm not in the mood to re-record this portion of the video. Uh, but yeah, I find it to be very functional, very versatile. It's a very likable DNA, very likable formula. I'm personally a fan of it. And then last up, the presentation. I know Zara uses these bottles quite a bit. It does resemble some of the older Armani and Paco Rabanne presentations that I've seen and that I've owned. Um, but all in all, I kind of like it. I like the fact that it's easy to identify when you walk into Zara because they do experiment with many different types of bottles, many different types of names, many different types of packaging and, and colors and stuff like that. My final verdict on this fragrance is I don't necessarily love it, but I can see how it fits into its place in the market. And what I mean by that is, if you're looking for a fragrance to purchase as a gift, or you don't have a whole lot of money to spend, but you do wanna smell good, or if you're just looking for a fragrance to get you through uh, maybe some of those office days when you need to reapply quite a bit, I think this fragrance would do very, very well in that type of a scenario and that type of an occasion. Uh, but me, you know, I have Blue de Chanel, so I'm probably gonna end up wearing that instead but I do think that this is a solid fragrance. I do, however, prefer warm black, and I'm also excited to give you my thoughts on agate black. So thank you so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Of course, if you took something of value from this video, I would really appreciate it if you could support this channel by subscribing to it. All you have to do is click on that red button in the corner. And of course, please don't forget to enable notifications by clicking on that bell icon. This way, whenever I do upload these videos, they will get delivered straight to your feed. You never need to worry about missing any of my future uploads. Thanks again for watching. I love you all. We'll see you next time. Bye.